All right. Um, it's schools. This is too early, man. I don't know. I mean, but, you know, according to Dr. Robert Redfield, he was saying that, you know, we need as a people to have a complete a safe common ground, uh, safe procedures for individuals to have that face to face contact. But he believed in focusing and face covering is the major key. And, you know, we got states and some uh, senators and governors, they were trying to really work on and a lot of my apprehensive for actually, you know, having that close in contact with, you know, children, you know, here, especially the high school students that have that interaction. And, you know, which they should be. I mean, statistics were showing that 89% of African American um, parents are, you know, they agree that this is, you know, going back to school in the fall is largely at risk, you know, martyr risk. Uh, compared to you know Hispanic parents, eighty percent, and whites is sixty four percent. I mean, this is still something going on here. It's going to take two or three years for a vaccine to hit. I mean, even Dr. Fauci, you know, who is the you know director of Institute of Allergies, man. I mean, he was just saying that here in infectious diseases that this is historic. This is like you know comparable to the uh, to the plague here in nineteen eighteen that killed over like hundred fifty million people. So I mean, hopefully we don't get that serious. But I mean, three point four million. Americans had tested positive for the coronavirus. 40% of them are showing no symptoms. Okay, even though you're showing no symptoms, you still have the ability to go in and pass it to everyone else. Now, at first, when this all this stuff was going on, I was pro mask. And then down the line, as months pass, I'm like, okay, I don't really care. I think it should be optional. But now, doing a little bit more research, you can prevent, like I said, you can prevent just, you know, if someone has the coronavirus and I got a mask and I'm talking to them, I might get it at a slightest touch, but it's better than nothing. You know, I'm less likely to get it if I don't have a mask on because, you know, it touches through your nostrils and you get it from touching things, surfaces. That's why, you know, you got to constantly wash your hands. I understand that your immune system has to build the immunity of it. You know, you still have to go outside and everything. I don't, do, I don't believe in the completely total isolation, but if you still have to go out and do your day-to-day -day business and still soak in the sun, get that vitamin D, so you won't get vitamin D deficiency and you're going to get rickets and all this type of stuff, man. You know, wear a mask. Wear a mask in public. Uh, I was telling my fiance, like, you know, we got to wear a mask. We have to wear a mask, but I know it sucks. And the proper way to wear it is, you know, wear it over your nose. <laughs> Some people wear it over their face. <laughs> you know, I know you want to breathe, but you, you don't want to breathe in your own carbon, you know, dioxide. But at the same time, you know, for us protection, you know, wearing a mask is, is key. And I can believe I'm saying this. I think Costco's and Walmart, whatever they're doing and enforcing, that's starting to enforce some people to wear a mask in order for them to assist them and give them customer service. They're doing a good job at this particular moment. I mean, this, that's something that's very smart. I believe children you know, may have to go to school, you know, with a mask on if they decide to reopen in the wintertime or whatever, man. But as you can see, like the summer, it is the summer and people still catching it. So obviously heat is not, <laughs> we don't know what this is. The heat is not you now eliminating it from, and you know, the symptoms, like you have nausea, vomiting, you know, diarrhea, all kinds of stuff, man. It, it, it's not good. You know, it, it's passing out, blacking out. It's, it's something that you don't want to have. And I, and I talked to a few individuals that actually um, had the virus and don't get me wrong. It is something out there. And I'll say the only good thing is, is that we have a lot of recovery rates. So we can be able to maintain it, you know, I mean, ain't God like Ebola had a huge, huge uh, fatality rate at one point. But, you know, thank God that the U.S. was able to, you know, maintain this before it was spread very quickly. It's that in the uh, swine flu. I mean, same thing with the flu here, the regular flu, we was able to, you know, contain it. But, but we can't, we can treat it, you know, we can't, you know, simply eliminate it. That's why you have the flu shot every year um, in most government jobs or federal jobs. Even in um, the medical industry, um, you know, health insurance industry, so healthcare, you're going to have that as well. So, I mean, it's just things that, you know, we have to really work on too. But I really do believe that kids, you know, need, of course, need to get the education. But virtual learning should be the key here. I mean, you still can learn so many things. Like now I heard that Google is offering scholarships for those who take uh, a class in Coursera. Uh, it takes about three to six months. It's like a computer science degree in um, edX. And those are like, you know, developed by, you know, Stanford and Harvard, educated, you know, professionals and professors. And they teach you it. I think you pay you know, like 39 to $79 a month for three, six months. That's which is not bad. Better than a four-year university. And, you know, you use that certificate and you can apply at Google. And when you apply at Google, you at least be making like 63 k Now, that might not be a whole lot in like New York, California or uh, Hawaii on D.C. area. But if you live in... 
you know what I mean? West, and that's decent, man. See, three thousand dollars a year. That's you can you can live comfortable with that. You know, especially if you live below your means. So that's just something that's good. I will say the online learning is a great tool. Um, Comcast and different major internet companies are working with um families that they can't afford like their internet bill, but they know they need the internet because it's essential for the children and their learning. So you know, you want you want your kids to go out there, and make sure they they logging in and they're learning, they're growing. And all this type of thing. So, so it is forcing kids. The only bad side is it's forcing a lot of children to be in home, I mean, inside their home, because you gotta be inside your house, so obviously, for the most part, to do your schoolwork. Um, you know, unless you know you got a little patio, you're fortunate about that. But for the most part, you know, kids at home, um, just doing homework, and you're not really too much. I like to say balance it out going outside. I do believe in getting outside there and uh, getting to nature, which is extremely important. But um, I think it's a little too early. I would say, you know, to to really enforce this now unless they like i said unless they have children with masks on and they just have to like limit the the class size you know in each classroom seriously i mean a lot of these schools do but you know governor cromo cromo from uh, new york keeps saying like you know in order for we can have face-to-face -face contact in uh educational institutions cities have to be in phase four so um it, it's something something a little different something changed but you know i want you guys to pan what you guys think about this man you know should schools be open or short schools so we just stick to this virtual learning in this particular moment man and you know just get books from amazon pdfs <laughs> and learn from there and then you know i know it might be a lot of stress on you know the parents but i will say this too is that you know the suicide rate has gone up tremendously and you know i feel for the kids that use school as a tool not only to elevate themselves but to get out there you know the home there maybe they might be in an abusive home uh, suicide rates is there on uh, drug overdose uh, because of boredom and depression it's, it's been high you know according to the doctor you know dr Redfield was on the saying that man you know it's we've seen a lot of deaths a lot of deaths uh, of young people of those um factors man compared to the COVID. but i think school and education is, is very essential you know i still got to learn homeschooling is important it may be stressful to a lot of parents, but I mean, learning how to do your kids' homework, I think that's that's the key thing, too. And then you can look at it, too, in the positive aspect that you are educating yourself, too, even though it's something that you don't know. You may try to do your fifth grade math or something for your, you know, your, your 10 year old, or whatever, but it's just something that's good family bounty, you know, with this whole COVID stuff. I know it's tough, and a lot of people have been dying, but we can, it's, it's all temporary, but. Things doesn't stop, you know, you always can forever learn, and that's the beauty of the internet. But this is your boy on Link. You guys tune in, like, comment, subscribe. Please share this video, subscribe to the channel. You guys take care. I'm out. Deuces.